Hello, uh, my name is John for Through the Eyes of George. Today I'd like to talk to you about mental health, God, spirituality, and our upcoming 2020 election. And uh, what does that mean for us today? And, and what would George Washington think about those things? Um, I will be using this book here called Washington's God uh, by Michael and Jana Novak uh, to uh, read some quotes from uh, George Washington and uh, to start off about mental health George Washington said on February 15th 1787 to his m beloved mother uh, Mary Ball Washington that happiness depends more upon the internal flame of one's own mind than on the externals of the world now uh, the context of that uh, letter that George Washington sent to his mom was talking about the things that go on around you and the things that the world throws at you or other people or your environment or, or what have you. Uh, it is up to you to choose your own happiness. Nobody can dictate your own happiness. And yes, sometimes... Um, uh, a little sidebar to that. Sometimes people are born into um, treacherous environments, and uh, which is a very sad thing. And uh, but when we uh, have the opportunity to choose our happiness and to choose our joy, and to not buy into the thoughts of doubt, worry, and fear to know that you are more than a conqueror in every situation, to always say to yourself, whatever your name is, say, my name is John, so I'll say it like that, I, John, will prevail, or I am more than a conqueror, or I will get through this. George Washington absolutely understood that. For God's sakes, during the French and Indian War, um, he had three bullet holes shot through his coat, or three or four, and had two horses shot out from under him. He had a plethora of diseases his whole life. Um, he had heartaches uh, from people betraying him as president and as commander-in-chief of the Con Continental Army. Uh, he had many things on his mind, but what remained constant is that he chose his own happiness. Now, George Washington grew up in a godly home. Uh, Augustus and Mary Ball, uh, Augustus, his father, Mary Ball, his mother, were godly people. And uh, George Washington, some of his relatives were, uh, one of his relatives, I guess I, you, you could say, was an Anglican pastor. Now, there is no definitive uh, religious belief of George Washington, but you could say that uh, he was uh, an Anglican Christian. You could conclude that more than any other type of belief. Uh, looking at uh, George Washington's life, his correspondence, the things he said, uh, what he did, um, things of that sort. And he did join the uh, uh, Masonic Lodge in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and that has some level of spirituality to it. To what extent, I personally don't know. Uh, and he prayed fervently and daily, and he also uh, attended church services before, during, and after his time um, as President of the United States or as POTUS One, and. Uh, that's a segue into I built a website. Uh, well, I designed, I didn't build, I designed a website called POTUS1, www.potus, President of the United States 1.com, all about George Washington and just centralizing all of the information about George Washington that I've learned and that, I've, um, that I'm excited about to, to, to teach. Uh, people about um, on one location. So that's www.potus1.com. And George Washington exercised a lot of religious tolerance. 
that's what's in uh, one of our uh, the f not that's what's in our constitution, but precisely in our um, first uh, amendment to to the Bill of Rights. Um, he uh, he addressed the uh, Baptists in May 1789. March 1790, he addressed the uh, Roman Catholic Church. Or yeah, March 1790, he addressed the Roman Catholic Church. And the Hebrew congregation he addressed on August 1790. He also addressed and uh, talked about two, two times he made a declaration of uh, thanksgiving. One on October 3rd, 1789, and the second one on January 1st, 1795. And as far as I know, and as far as I've read, um, around 102, 100 times in correspondence letters, speeches, and things like that, George Washington talked about God. Uh, probably, in my personal opinion, and this may be biased to other people, um, because I've read so much about George Washington, but I think George talked the most about a almighty creator or God more than any president. And yes, many presidents have talked about God in one way or another, but I think George, in my opinion, talked about him the most. But now back to George Washington. Now, to read some quotes about George Washington from this book, he says on... Uh, to the Baptist churches in Virginia on uh, in May 1789, he says, Every man conducting himself as a good citizen and paying accountable to God alone for his religious opinions, which means that George Washington didn't care whatever you believe in, but that your religious beliefs are between you and God alone, or you and whatever you believe in God ought to be protected in worshiping the deity according to the dictates of his own conscience. How fantastic is that? Uh, to the Roman Catholic uh, Roman Catholics of the United States of America, excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, March 1790, he says, all those who conduct themselves, oh man, I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry, all those who conduct themselves as worthy members of the community are equally entitled to the protection of civil government. I hope ever to see America among the foremost nations in examples of justice and liberality. Man, I don't know what's wrong here. Anyway, August August 1790, George Washington says to the Hebrew congregation of Newport, which is very famous. It's a very famous quote about uh, George Washington and religious toleration. He says, "It is now no more that toleration is spoken of as it were the indulgence of one class of people. Everyone should have toleration. Uh, that another enjoy the exercise of their inherent natural rights." You know, to believe in whatever you believe. For happily the government of the United States, which gives bigotry no sanction to persecution, no assistance, it requires only they who live under its protection should demean themselves as good citizens and giving it on all occasions their effectual support. So people who, you know, go out and burn stuff down in America or who protest in a violent way, who aren't tolerant through diplomacy and um, their use of words. Um, George Washington uh, would not tolerate that. He would be tolerant of people's ideas and their religious beliefs and talking things out like adults. Uh, now... Where do I want to go? Okay, yeah, that's right. So, moving on to uh, the election of 2020 and uh, uh, our current president, Donald Trump. One thing that I think about a lot is um, uh, George Washington was big on trade. Uh, and he did his best with what he knew about foreign policy. And... Um, 
you know, yes, slavery was around in George Washington's time. And there's a great book right here called um, The Only Unavoidable Subject of Reg Regret by Mary V. Thompson. She's a fantastic, amazing historian at Mount Vernon. Uh, if you ever have a chance to read it, I suggest reading that book. But this book is all about George Washington. It's a current book. It came out uh, a, little, a little while ago. But it's all about George Washington, his thoughts, and the state of the United States and the, on the topic of slavery. Now, uh, and also there's another great book uh, about that topic and George Washington called An, An Imperfect God. Uh, by Henry uh, Weinrich or uh, Renrich, or uh, I can't pronounce his name correctly, but it's Henry Weinrich or Renrich. But uh, moving on, think about this for a second. Uh, in the United States, we have, uh, well, not we have, I'm sorry, we had slavery for about 400 years or so, uh, and we abolished it and uh, went, did away with it. And other countries had it for centuries and then finally did away with it. But you know what's interesting to me is that Donald Trump um, and uh, some of his State of the Union addresses that he's had and other uh, 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 public speaking uh, things he's done, he talks about the, de uh, sorry, the detestable, disgusting nature of human trafficking. Now, a person could conclude that human trafficking is like uh, slavery in one way or another. And it is a very detestable, disgusting uh, thing that people do that to other people and enslave them in that kind of way. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of all of that. Um, it doesn't give people, uh, from my uh godly perspective the uh, free will choice to live and to do uh, their pursuit of happiness and whatever they choose. I don't think anyone would choose to be bought and sold like uh, human trafficking is go going on today in the uh, underbelly of the criminal world or uh, I don't think anybody today would agree with slavery in the detestable nature that it was back in the uh, 16, 17, 1800s and even before that. So I say all that because George Washington detested uh, at the end of his life he, uh, and the things that he saw in the Revolutionary War uh, and the things he did signing the Slave Trade Act of 1794 and um, being with um, uh, the people he was around and learning a lot about it. Uh, Billy Lee especially, uh, he, he knew that it was a detestable thing. And that uh, in the Declaration of Independence, some one of the drafts, just I may say for just a moment here, that there was going to be a small paragraph about the detestable nature of slavery. But the states of Georgia and South Carolina uh, didn't want it in there because it was, the profit and the money that it brought in to those states back in, in the context of uh, slavery in the 1700s, it brought in some revenue. And the moment that the United States uh, could... Uh, take themselves out of the international slave trade in the early 1800s, they did. Um, and then the Constitution, when uh, it was made, they made this basically, um, I guess the right word, I'm not really sure, I think it's addendum, uh, that uh, that we could have, uh, we could be involved, I guess you could say, in the international slave trade uh, for 20 years, and then you have to uh, figure out something else. And at, in the early 1800s, we got rid of it. And I'll put all my sources in the description below for all these things. But uh, I say all that about trade and um, the detestable nature of slavery is that uh, 
Donald Trump is big on fair trade from the United States to another country. And in speaking of China, well, me bringing up China, is that one of the things that they, they China does in terms of stealing in intellectual property besides technology is uh, making fake uh, copies of uh, purses and clothes and things like that and selling it to people like it's the real thing, especially makeup. Did you know that? Look that up. China uh, steals the, I guess, um, makes uh, or reproduces uh, fake cosmetics and sells it at a cheaper price that is very harmful and poisonous to the person using that makeup. It's kind of crazy to think about. And I think it's a great thing. Now, Donald Trump is a lot of things in terms of whatever people want to say about him. But he is uh, doing what I think George Washington would think a great job in terms of trade and foreign policy and putting America first uh, in terms of standing up to China. Now, Donald Trump... Uh, uh, he is running for office in 2020. And George Washington got unanimously elected as president twice. He didn't want to be, you know, uh, and he turned down a third term. He was getting older in his age and uh, he just wanted to be at home um, underneath his vine and fig tree with his family and with his beloved Martha. Now, um, I don't know the outcome of the election in 2020, but George Washington, if he were alive today, uh, he'd probably have to live with the political parties because political parties were forming in his time. But I think he would uh, want a more chivalrous way of going about things on both sides, Democrat and Republican, Libertarian, Green Party, Socialist Party, uh, and any other party you can think of, the Green Party, a more chivalrous manner of going about things and just talking about the facts, not making stuff up like fake news. And remember, fake news started with Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson having those newspapers uh, and publishing slanderous stories about each other. Now, that's about it uh, that I have to say about uh, those things. And thank you for watching this video and uh, looking forward to the next one. And don't forget to check out my uh, website I built. Uh, the URL is www.potus1.com. That is P-O-T-U-S, the number one, dot com. And uh, again, thank you for watching this video and uh, looking forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.